Welcome to Oddball. I'm Charlotte Wilder, and that over there, as always, is the one and only Amin El Hassan. I mean, we have a great show for everybody today. We have to talk about those first playing games: Lakers, Pelicans, Kings, Warriors. And is this the is this the end of the Warriors dynasty? Yeah, coming up soon on Oddball. Get ready to say some RIPs, everybody. Yeah, but the sad. later more all the rest. But first, we are going to start with Lakers Pelicans. The Lakers beat uh, New Orleans one ten to one hundred six. Uh, this was the seven eight game. Um, so the Pelicans have one more chance to still stay alive. Uh, they did. Zion played an amazing game. He he tied the score up ninety three ninety three. He had forty points, eleven rebounds, five assists. And then he left the court with what appears to be a left hamstring injury. But I mean, I'm most interested in in how he left the court after the. Which, the, granted, this was a devastating moment. His first game with stakes, real game with stakes. Because remember when the Pelicans made that playoff run a couple of years ago, he was hurt. He didn't play in that. And when they lost in the play in last year, he was hurt. He didn't play in that. So this is the first time Zion has an opportunity. Basically, since 2019, since the the NCAA tournament, to play in a game that has stakes, play in a game with meaning, uh, with progression or perhaps one step closer to elimination. And he answered the bell like no other. I mean, he came out 20 points in the first half, and Shaq and Barkley and the guys at halftime said, okay, now you got to do it again in the second half. And he said, okay. And he went out and he did it in the second half, and then with about three minutes to go, it's a tied game. It's a close game. He he tweaks something. We don't really see it, but what we do see is him head off into the locker room. And I know it must be crushing for a guy who's worked so hard to get back and be healthy and finally play in this meaningful basketball. But he stomped off like a toddler, man. He looked so upset. He, you know what he looked like? He looked like a kid that was promised a pizza party at the end of this, and then when it was just revealed to him. There will be no pizza party. We're having kale salads instead. And they're just like, well, oh. I don't like kale. And that's what it looked like as he stopped kale off salad, to the locker room. Kale salad with a chance of a pizza party in the future because this isn't over. I really, I just hope so much that he can play because this was so exciting. I was so sad for him because I really, I really think that the Pelicans would have done it if he had stayed in the game. He was, he was cooking and, you know, but you know what he did look like when he stomped off the court? I thought of the Arthur meme. His fists were balled up uh, and he was sort of like, yeah, yeah. which, Big you know, meaty and, fist, yeah. yeah. And, and I can't blame him, but do you think, I don't know. Have you heard anything? If he, if he might play or not? Well, here's, the, here's the deal, Charlotte. Um, he's been through such a crazy year. It feels like a million years ago, but the whole stuff with like the internet gossip and scandals and all that. And, that that happened this year. That was all in this season where, you know, the, the weight claw stuff in his contract came out. Stephen A. Smith getting on him after the IST. He's had so many ups and downs. And so this felt like such a beautiful kind of like, okay, none of that matters. Because now that we're playing in games that matter, I show up. I do my thing. And, it you know, his body failed him. And, I, again, fingers crossed, we hope that it's a hamstring, he's got a day to rest, get treatment. The good news is they are the home team. They don't have to travel anywhere. Uh, so, And they await the Sacramento Kings, who they've had a lot of success against during the regular season. So all of those things kind of lean towards, all right, New Orleans, you messed that one up, but at least now you've got a chance to redeem yourself in this second game. And also you get to play what many would consider to be the easier opponent between the top two seeds. Okay, so, I mean, you took us there. Back to the Lakers side of all of this. Some people were saying, and when I say some people, I'm like, I mean, I don't know who was saying. I feel like the internet, like some people on Twitter were saying this, where it got to the point where a reporter asked Darvin Ham if LA had considered throwing the game against the Pelicans so that they could have then gone on to play the Warriors or the Kings, which assumes in this situation that they would have absolutely beat said team that they were facing and then gone on to play the Thunder. 
in the first round of the playoffs, which to me is just like one of the dumbest things I've ever heard when you when you walk through it and we'll get to the reasoning. But first, Darvin Ham also thought it was very dumb. He said it sounds like, quote, someone that just got out of the insane asylum. He said that's insane wow. asylum reasoning, which I don't even know if that's kosher to say anymore. But I mean, yeah. it, it it is I have trouble thinking that this is do you think people actually believe that the Lakers would have done this? Yeah, that's, a, that's the 20 CB bell that I just hit there. Insane Asylum is very 20th century. Yeah, talk we right don't there. say that anymore, Darwin. Sorry. Yeah. No, and also, to be clear, we don't say Funny Farm or Looney Bin either. Keep all of those out of your. Thank you lexicon. for not saying. For thank pe- you for not saying well, either of those. Well, the only way we're going to let people know is we educate them what's on and off the table. Like those okay. things are the who, who, house, all that stuff is out. Right? All right. Okay. okay. Back to <laughs> Lakers. Uh, yeah, it is. It is absolute hogwash for a couple of reasons, right? Number one is you're dealing with massively competitive people, right? So the idea that you will walk in a locker room, be the leader of these men, say, we're trying to win a championship. We are good enough to win a championship. Our seed doesn't matter. But it kind of let's not play Denver because they're going to kick our ass every time. <laughs> that, that mentality doesn't even need play in. It doesn't even impact. And if if a leader walked into a locker room and said that, he would instantly lose that locker room. But, Charlotte, forget about, like, manly machismo, whatever, I can do anything. Set that aside, just strategically. You win that game, you are in the playoffs, meaning you have a best-of-seven chance to beat your opponent. And Mm -hmm. in the span of four to seven games, a lot can happen. Somebody can get hurt. Somebody could get suspended. Somebody could get sick. Somebody could get ejected. There's so many things that could happen. Somebody could just not have a good series. All yeah. of those things, you have the opportunity to do that and go ahead and win that series, no matter what the odds are, right? Right. If you lose that game, you go to a weird-ass winner-take-all scenario where, yes, if you win, now you get the quote-unquote easier opponent. But you winning that game is not guaranteed. If I think I'm better than someone, I want as many opportunities to play them as possible. Because the shorter the sample size, the smaller the sample size, the more the chance that something weird happens. Let me give you a very exaggerated example. Charlotte, if you went and shot shot for shot against Steph Curry, best of 100, the person who shoots best, from one uh, of a hundred shots, mm-hmm. who's gonna win that one? Well, Steph Curry. Well, I, Steph you know, I have been practicing. I have been practicing. You have been practicing with the nanny and the kid out mm-hmm. on the court. That's right. Yeah. Now, imagine I shrank that to one shot. Yes, yeah, Steph Curry's a great shooter, but literally, if it's one shot, anything could happen. He could sneeze in the middle. So Some, mm-hmm. something could distract him. He could remember something. His His phone might ring. Just something could happen conceivably to throw off that one shot, whereas the next 99 would have gone in immediately or or without without problem. Whereas for you, you could make that one shot and probably miss the next 99. But (laughs) all it took was that one shot. And so you never want the sample size to be so small. That's why we don't like as opponents or as as competitors, we don't like game sevens. If I'm up 3-0, let me sweep. If yeah. not, let me win in five. If not, let me win in six. Game seven is the the hardest thing because anything can happen. So yeah. this was always just a silly, silly kind of, it's internet logic. It's from people who, who do not operate in these circles for real. Yeah, this is galaxy brain stuff. And I liked what Anthony Davis said about it. He said, if you mess with the game, it will mess with you, which 1, I think is, it, it, that's pretty much how it goes. Like if you play with the basketball gods, they're going to be like, oh, you think you're cute? Cool. You're going to lose, um, which Dude. takes us to the the winner go home game that was yeah. last night, which was Warriors Kings. Yep. Um, and the Warriors lost. And it was yep. really, really depressing. I mean, and yes, it was at home at the Kings, you know, light the beam, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the Warriors beat them at home last year. Kings got their revenge, did it without Kevin Herter, without Malik Monk. Um, but Keegan Murray just played his butt off, Keon Ellis. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I have a take that I would like to to run by you. Are you ready? 
Mm -hmm. I think that Joe Missoula is to thank for Keon Ellis's prowess on defense because he went out, he contested his shot. People forget that was the shot that he that Joe Missoula contested. And if I'm wrong, that's even funnier. Wait, Joe Missoula contesting Royce O'Neal's shot. Was it Keon, Keon Ellis? No, it was Royce oh. O'Neal. Royce O'Neal and Keon Ellis are like kind of the same name, though. Not at all. A little. Not even close. They're like there's there's literally no similarity in the names, the 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 teams they play for, their appearances, their their backgrounds. Royce like, O'Neal, Keon Ellis, not even the same amount of syllables. not even the same number of syllables. You just Damn. wanted to shoehorn Joe Mazzulla in here. I know what you're doing. This is all part of Charlotte's plan to get Joe Mazzulla as a guest on Oddball. And she thinks if she butters him up and does all of this stuff, kind of like uh, singing his praises, that somehow this is going to increase our chances. I don't, I don't think that's going to work. Okay. And I reject it. No, but you're right. Keon Ellis and Keegan Murray, th that's the, the story of the night is not, yeah, we lost to the Kings. They blew us out. We couldn't stop Fox and Sabonis. I think that one you can kind of walk away somewhat with your head held high like, their stars came out and start out. Yeah. But it's like, no, you got you got killed by the young boys. And and that's the part where, you know, I think when you look at the Warriors mm -hmm. and you say, what made them so successful in mm -hmm. the past? Part of it, absolutely, their stars were stars. And Clay Thompson last night going over for 10 and looking very mortal, that didn't help. And and Draymond did his best, but he's clearly not what he was two or three years ago. And even Steph, it, it, the burden seemed like a lot, a lot for him. That's part of it. But the other part that people don't talk about is the Warriors supporting cast mm -hmm. through all those championships was insane. It was like this murderous row of insane high IQ players who were still close enough to their primes to do damage. Sean Livingston and Leandro Barbosa and Andrew Bogut and Zaza Pachulia and David West. And you know, I, I know I'm like blending over a couple of different eras here. Otto Porter, Nemanja Bielica, like These weren't guys on the last legs of their career. These weren't guys who were first or second year players trying to figure it out. And when you look at the, the supporting cast now, that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. old guys and it's super young guys and probably like Gary Payton might be the only guy kind of in the middle in terms of young enough to be impactful. And he was hurt last night. Old enough to have some wisdom. And he was hurt, hurt last night. So it's, it's without kind of a strong supporting cast, this was always going to be an uphill battle for a team that's already faced so much adversity this year. They had an assistant coach pass away in the middle of yeah. the year at a team dinner. Uh, you know, the, try, the Draymond Green stuff with his suspensions, trying to get Chris Paul integrated. Chris Paul gets hurt. If it wasn't one thing, it was another thing all year long for the Warriors. And this is how dynasties kind of end. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Is that yep. the yeah, famously yep. said by uh, Kermit the Frog? Um, you know, I Did think, it? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I felt like uh, giving is, credit where credit is, this, is due. Are you, doing, wait, are you doing another thing here where it's like, yeah, Joe Mazzulla contested Keon Ellis and Kermit the Frog said this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, to me, this what you were talking about before, about the competitor in the Lakers, about you can't walk into that room and think you're going to lose. To me, mm -hmm. this is all sort of a part of the same conversation because you have, you know, Clay is a free agent. And, and some people are saying like, well, you know, Clay should just retire. Like, I think what is so difficult about the end of this Warriors dynasty in particular, you know, Draymond, Steph and Clay, um, is that it's impossible to believe that you can't do something when your whole life what you've tried to do has been sort of impossible like saying you're gonna play in the nba i know clay's dad played in the nba it's still like okay good luck saying you're gonna win a championship is like okay good luck i'm gonna win four championships like the the amount that you have to believe in yourself and your ability to just switch that off and be like okay well i guess i'm old now like, that's really difficult. And so I'm not surprised that it's ending this way because when you have this many guys being paid this much money, how do you balance that? No, yeah, delusion is the number one ingredient of a successful NBA career. Because if someone told you there's 8 billion people on the planet, there are only 450, 500 that play in this league, already you're like, wait, what? 
and then you say, oh yeah, you got to compete against all these tall athletic people from all over the world. Like, wait, what? Like, it, yeah, it, right. all of it, you have to have like this insane level of self-belief. And for Clay Thompson, look, he tore his Achilles and his ACL and came back and won a championship. And yeah. was a, a, a fixture of that, that team. And then the next year played even better. Last year, he had a really strong year offensively. So, yes, he struggled this year. He had to get benched at one point and all that. But this is all part and parcel of the, of the struggle, of the narrative of like, yeah, they thought I couldn't do it. And mm -hmm. yet here I am. Remember, this dude wasn't a top three pick. He was like the 12th pick in the draft. He played at Washington State. And he's a Hall of Famer. So, no. You play as long as you feel like it gives you joy, my man. Like, don't don't listen to anybody else. Well, I'm sure that we're going to talk about the Warriors a lot uh, this offseason. But for now, we'll be right back with Bet the Show. Except, oh, hold on. I'm getting some, some breaking yeah. news. Uh, Kawhi Leonard has been named to that final roster spot on Team USA for the Olympics. And I'm told we have... Sorry, we have Kawhi with us. Uh, Kawhi, can you hear me? Are you, uh, am I coming through? I don't even know where you're sitting at. But... <laughs> Welcome back to Oddball. It is time for the game you know and love. Bet the show. Bet the show is sponsored by DraftKings. And stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer Throughout the show, DraftKings, the crown is yours. Amin, oh, are you yeah. ready for some bets? Yes, I guess I am. Okay, the first one, we have the Philly versus Miami playing game tonight. Uh, Miami right. is the eighth seed. The Sixers are the seventh seed. And as of now, when we're recording this, the game spread is Philly minus five and a half. Right. Uh, the season series is tied 2-2. Two -two. Um, and Embiid and Butler only played in one game. So what are you taking here? Well, I was at the game that they both played in, and it was a hard-fought game. It was Embiid's second or third game back, I believe, from injury. And uh, we saw Tyrese Maxey have an amazing night and kind of carry the Sixers down the stretch as Embiid had a hot start and kind of ran out of steam. The Sixers, I you know, I, I said this before. I think the Sixers are going to win this game and go ahead and face the Knicks in the first round. But Charlotte, these teams play close, and I think Jimmy Butler does have a sort of psychological thing that hold that he has over Philadelphia. So I'm going to say five and a half, maybe too many points for the Sixers, and wow. I'm going to go with the Heat covering here. Although I still think the Sixers are going to win. Okay. Okay. So Jimmy Butler, part of the the playoff Jimmy, obviously, is the hold uh -huh. he has sort of over the entire league, I would say. Uh, his over-under, personally, is 23 and a half points. And he had hit that number 18 times in 60 games this season um, and has had 45 playoff games of 24-plus points in 119 playoff games uh what are you taking here do you think he's gonna go off for more than that oh see this is this is this is the fun part right because mm -hmm. we've talked about jimmy all all basically all year long is like when's he gonna turn it on and then he <laughs> turned it on a little bit after the uh all-star break but then he kind of went back in fact that game against uh philly mm -hmm. that was the most noticeable part that down the stretch where was jimmy butler it was actually uh um Gary Terry, Terry Rozier, who yeah. was taking all the shots and being kind of the main engine uh, down the stretch. But here's the deal. The Heat last played on Sunday, meaning they've had Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday off. And Jimmy Butler, off of three-plus days of rest, plays his best basketball Charlotte. Averages 21.5 points a game, six rebounds, 5.2 assists, and shooting a hair under 50% from the field and a hair under 47% from three. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you to bang that over on Jimmy Butler, 23 and a half points. I think he has a big game, but I don't know if it's enough to beat the Sixers. Wow. I like those bets, Amin. I'm with you. I'm ride with him. Hashtag ride with Amin. There you go. All right, Charlotte, now it's your turn. You get the carcass game. Atlanta versus Chicago. The game line is Bulls minus three. The over-under 
is 222 and a half total. Again, check DraftKings sportsbook.com to make sure those latest numbers are accurate. Any chance one of these teams makes a run, Charlotte? Um, By a run, no. I mean winning more than one game. <laughs> Well, someone has to win this game. Someone has so to. Someone has the Bulls, to. The Bulls are, are favored here, and I feel like they're going to cover. I think they're okay. going to win by more than three. Atlanta, they lost a bunch of games heading into the playoffs. Trey Young is back, I know, but but, um, but? but they're Atlanta, and it's and they- just... They they beat the Bulls twice this year. The two games they won were the ones where Trey Young didn't play. The two games they lost was the one where Trey Young did play. So, yeah, they've I, also been just terrible on the road. So I'm gonna go with the Bulls, which would mean we would have a Heat Bulls rematch uh, of the playing tournament last year, yep. which I would like. Um, also, we people forget that the Bulls have Demar Derozan. And DeMar DeRozan has DR DeRozan, his daughter, who makes an incredible screeching noise. He even posted it on his story during other teams' free throws. And I think actually makes a big difference in the game. So I'm not betting against her, I mean. It absolutely did. I watched that game with my kids last year. And my kids Uh were like, it's making a difference. And at first I was like, kids, these are pros. They, They cancel everything. I can't hear anything. But sure enough, man, that little screech. No matter what was happening in the crowd, it pierced through. And I, I can't remember what the numbers are now, but like they definitely shot worse when the kid was screeching than any other time. So 100%. You know what? She also, she there's something very particular about that sound. It's like a really, it's a horror movie sound, but it's also funny at the same time, which I think is an absolutely brilliant mix by DR. So she's, she's onto something. Like her father, she has also impeccable timing. Yes. <laughs> she definitely does. Um, okay, we have one more bet here to close out today's show, and that is, will there be a buzzer beater win in a round one series? Okay, so right now we have Denver versus LA at plus 2,500. We have LA versus Dallas, uh, Cleveland versus Orlando, Minnesota versus Phoenix. Uh, I just saw MIL and I was like, Milan versus... Uh, yes, it- uh, Armani <laughs> Milano. All- <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> Mike are- Hall. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Those are all <laughs> plus uh, 2,200. I'm having so much trouble reading numbers today, I mean. Today. I'm bright red right now if you're not watching. You should be watching on the DK Network. Um, and there have been 13 game-winning buzzer beaters in round one since 2000. The most uh-huh. recent one was uh, Jason Tatum in 2022 against the Nets. What do you think? Are you going to take this? I'm going to take, yes. I will say, and I'll, I'll tell you where it's going to happen. It's going to happen at Clippers versus Mavericks. These two teams don't like each other. These two teams are, are diametrically opposed. They played against each other in the playoffs before. There's lots of bad, bad blood. There are not one, not two, but like four four different great shot makers playing in this series. I'm absolutely saying that Clippers versus the plus 2200. I'm taking that action for sure. Okay. Okay. The way I said, would you bet, take my bet that the Mavs are going to win in five? Yeah. No, that you're on your own on that one. Five. Oh my God. What if you're right? That's the crazy part. That's what I mean. I had this feeling. It came a premonition. It came over me and I was like, I'm going to say this. I'm going to get roasted. But if I'm right, I mean, and that is how you play the content game. Uh, I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow after these playing games. I love finding out what happens. It's the best thing in the world. The playoffs are here. And uh, here at DraftKings, I mean, oddball and DraftKings, DraftKings. we've got you covered. Yeah. The crowd is yours. And also every day but Monday. See? It all flows together. Beautiful. Imagine being a caveman. And every day you wake up, you're like, I'm hungry. All right, let me get my spear and go out there and a saber tooth and I might die. And you kill it and you skin it and you gut it and then you cook it and you eat it. And I'm like, all right, that was breakfast, right? And then one day as a caveman, someone walks up and says, it's called a McGriddle. 